Today we're at Kent Narrows, where on June 27th and 28th, it's gonna be Thunder at the Narrows. Wonderful boat racing, something you and the family would be delighted to see. Today we're gonna to talk to Wheeler Baker and other boat pilots, and you're gonna get a chance to look in the cockpit of these boats. Mark your calendar, June 27th and 28th, Thunder at the Narrows. can't figure a better person to get than Wheeler Baker to help us explain this event. Wheeler, thanks a million for being out here. Thanks for coming down, Fred. Now, the last time we interviewed you, I think it was cold and chilly. Yep. Now it's 70s. It was winter time, wasn't it? It was winter time. <laughs> it was a cold one, boy. <laughs> Next year, I'm not sure I'm going to make it through another wheel. <laughs> hey, Wheeler, let's do a couple of things. Uh -huh. uh, Thunder on the Narrows. Before we talk about this year's event, you told me before we started, you were at the very first Thunder on the Narrows. That's, well, Back in those days, it was a, they had what they called a wildcat race. Matter of fact, my father was the announcer. He was the announcer? Okay. And I it was down to the Y River. Okay. And um, I was a, just a kid. About you and I are about, yeah. You and I are about the same age. But I watched that race, and I was a, completely enthralled from that point forward. You knew that, Daddy, that's what I'm going to do. I just loved it. And uh, all my brothers, we were all over there, and every, we all got involved in the sport. One, matter of fact, there's three, three out of four of us drove. Okay, and then uh, my other brother and sister, they'd help support any way they could. So it's a family, it was a family operation? And we better do right or Pop would kick us in the butt. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And, and he's still keeping an eye on you. And that so was much. 1955. And then okay. the, the ne next year after that, they went up to Pioneer Point where the Russian embassy right, is. Right. And they had a, a race up there. And then the year, year after that, they came down to Cox's Creek because the Ken Allen Yacht Club, which is located right here, had a club down there. All right and they raced in Cox Creek, and then they bought this property, and from then on, we've been racing in this area. Right here. Now, Will, in case someone don't, doesn't know, what is the Thunder on the Narrows? Explain well, what it is. Um, it's a name we came up with to draw attention to our sport, to this event. Um, the Yacht Club's been very good to us, but in the late 80s, they, they were supporting everything, and they just didn't have the funds to sure. do it, so it, for a couple of years there was a lapse. So a group of us got together, top of my head it was Bob Wilson, myself, Mark Young, Kenny Stafford. Kenny's gone, God bless him. And uh, we went to Holly's Restaurant and put put it together. A lot of deals that were done at Holly's <laughs> Restaurant, I yeah. hate to see it go. Yeah, we, we put it together and at, at, the first couple of years they were running offshore races out here in the Chester River, okay. simultaneous with the hydros here. And it was wild. I bet it was. But then after a couple of years, we, we split. And uh, for the last 20 years, we've been on our own, 20 or so years. And uh, we, have our, we have a club. We meet once a month over Fisherman's Inn. Heck, at our last meeting, we had excess of 30 people show up to the meet. Now, these are drivers or just no, enthusiasts you, for a hundred You got it all. Okay. You got it all. all right. I mean, but we have. What's uh, the name of the club? Uh, Kettner's Racing Association. Oh, okay. all right. But we've got, what, Jimmy, we got, how many drivers we got in our club? We've got a half a dozen, eight. I would say at least a half dozen or more drivers. Yeah. And so that's we, Jimmy Stewart, who we'll meet later. This, Another driver who's this, helping us keep the facts straight. Okay. Yeah, this is Jimmy Stewart, not to be confused with the movie the famous great. famous Jimmy Stewart, okay. <laughs> but he's famous, too. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's, 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 so you've got it's, 30 people who meet on a regular basis? Well, our, uh, yeah. Well, our club, we've got about 50 members in the club. And then when we put the race on down here, we'll have, uh, oh, shucks. We'll have close to 100 members and volunteers to make it work and every year we have a beneficiary from their efforts they have to work for it okay um we've done hospice chester y and they fire help companies the race? is that how they work yeah they, we'll yeah. put them in a cook shack work okay. them okay. but uh this year the boy scouts are going to help us out oh great and great. If, if assuming we make some money we'll give them a piece of the profits all right and the community seems to like it. The organizations like it, and we—it makes us uh, feel good to try to help out, nice help the community. It becomes a community event. It's exactly what we're we're promoting. Yep. Now, if I'm watching this and I say, "Hey, okay, hydrofoil races, or hydro Hydro, races, hydroplane. Hydroplane races. What are they actually going to see over a couple of days? You told me I think six different races or six different. Well, categories. first off, let's get let's get you straightened okay, out. Okay, let's get straight. Let's get the terminology right. Hydroplanes. Two words. Okay. Hydro water plane is it like an airplane. Right. And it, what happens when this boat gets up to about 75 or 80 miles an hour? It's you got about the, the size of a handkerchief in the water at any given time. You got a little bit of propeller, a little bit of rudder, 
and a little bit on the sponsors. So you're flying. And, and when you get you watch them run, they're actually in the air. They're flying in the air. Hmm. Now, you, sometimes they get a little bit light, and in the newer designs, up front we have a little wing. So the driver from the from the steering wheel, we got a button. If the boat starts climbing too much, we give him some wing to help settle it down, so he can keep his foot in the throttle. Hmm. So it's uh, pretty cool. But we'll have uh, six classes of hydroplanes, ranging from uh, the kids' class, the small, the small class. And you told me they're little nine and ten, nine. Well, that's a, that's that's earlier than oh, that. That's earlier. Okay. And then, but in our in our race, which we're fortunate this year, the American Power Boat Association, our mother organization, has three big races every year. They have our nationals, have an Eastern Championship, and a Western, and they awarded our cl our club. The Eastern Championship oh, this year, okay. so we're going to have more boys, more boats come in, and uh, like I said, we'll have six classes of hydroplanes, two classes of flat bottoms like the ski boats, and as you're going to see later, we see Jimmy's we'll, we'll have right. the Jersey skiffs, okay, which are real. Crap. You told me that's a real they, chariot race. Right? They are the real. They are the crowd pleasers. People love them. Okay, great. They, they're real cool. And when you see them, he won't tell you because he's modest, but they they go into a turn three or four this far apart and they put them right up on their sides like hmm. this water spraying over i don't know how to do it they're brave men aren't they <laughs> are, brave men some people are say, crazy I'm not. some people say they're brave I'm not, okay now we're how about okay this is going to be on june tw june 27th and 28th okay and, and what will happen the day of the 27th a series of races yes when we start okay and we'll start be more races. we'll start everything from if everything works out we'll start racing at noon okay now like i said we got kids We've also, our club has also sponsored and supported what we call kid racing. And what they are, there's children out here from nine years old to 14. We got these little uh, nine foot outboards with uh, 15 horse Mercs so on they them. Get, they get to have a little bit of fun. Well, they race right out in front here. Okay. It's the cutest thing you ever saw I in your life. It oh, it's right. really cool. And this but is kind of how you it, started, right? That's exactly how yeah. I started. But it's an introductory, it's, it's try to keep our sport alive for the next couple of generations. You can't do it unless you got to have. It's like Little League. They you got to have seed corn. Right? Of course. It, right. You got to have that. And we feel it's important. And we wanted to do something to help our sport. And so you'll be helping out the Boy Scouts that day. Yep. You got racing from noon on. Now the refreshments here. Oh, so it's man. A great we, family event. We got anything you need right here. Okay. And there's seats for, for spectators. For those of you watching this, okay. this, is how, this is how it goes. You'll park underneath the bridge. Now, here's another thing we do. A couple years ago, we started uh, the disabled veterans from Walter Reed. Right. We've invited them over, oh, great, and great. Uh, we have trucking for troops. They supply us with the bus, and and you'll you'll park underneath the bridge. The bus will bring you to the gate. This year, we've got an eight-passenger golf cart to bring those that need help in here. But we've also uh, we're hoping we have in the past. We're hoping to get some of the some of the boys back that have been banged up real bad. And uh, we got a VIP tent out there, and standing right over there is the hostess of the VIP. Okay. VIP tent. Hi, my name's Alicia. I help with the boat races every year, and I used to drive boats, but I'm not in it anymore. Uh, how fast did you go when you were driving? About 120. 120, and this category, this type of boat behind it. Yeah. Okay. You're a brave woman. Okay. I won't go in a car. I won't go in anything 100 miles out. Alicia Wheeler was telling us before we went on, we had a chance to talk to you. You had some special things going on for wounded warriors or veterans. You want to share that with us? Yes, we do. Um, every year we invite them to the races with Saturday and Sunday. When they come out, we escort them to the VIP tent so okay. that they're out in the shade um, and can hear some commentary on what's actually happened with right. the boats and the race course. And they'll be coming from Walter Reed? Is there yes, or, I guess from the Walter Naval Reed. Hospital, wherever they are now. Yeah. Right. And but then um, there's a local business that's going to help them out as well, I think, on one of the nights of the races, right. put right. them up so they don't have to go home and they can come oh, back. So the they spend day. a weekend here in boat <laughs> racing and have a good time. Well, that's a great program. Good for you okay. doing it. Everybody here loves to see them when they come. They come talk to them under the tent, and it's a good time. How many do you get normally? Um, last year we had half a dozen at one time, oh, great. Okay. so we had the whole front row. Terrific, terrific. Yeah. Well, that's a good thing. Well, I'm hoping you get back in a boat again. Doesn't sound like you want to do it anymore. I help run the VIP tent, so that's I enough. get to walk it and talk about that's it. That's the best thing. Lisa, thank you very much for being with You're us welcome. today. Appreciate thank it. You. We take or take care of our sponsors, but we pay particular attention to those boys that are banged up. Veterans, which is great. Yeah, I think so. And yeah. what we would like to do this year, if 
we can work it out. I'd love to get them out on the race course, let them see what's going on. Oh, that'd be great. If they can, if they can do it. Okay. Yeah, but, uh, and promise, look, we got a promise from the QAC TV crew. We're going to be out there because we want to well, see this. Let me tell you something, buddy. You're in for a treat. <laughs> <laughs> My hair can't get any grayer, and I got a yellow stripe. Oh, I down forgot to back. tell you. And for the for the people that are watching this, you'll come down. It's all we got. Everything you need. Okay. Got transportation. It's uh, seven dollars to get in the gate. That's all. Kid, kids are free. Okay. And just come in and have a ball. Okay. Now I'm going to show you what I'm, what I'm thinking race, about it. When you look at the race course out here, okay. When you come down here, this is where the first turn is. So we're right. We can see it nice and easy. So here. imagine six of these side by side, 115 or 120 mm -hmm. mile an hour, all going for that one turn. That's a little tight. Really. That's a little <laughs> tight. It, it gets. It gets. That makes uh, the beltway look like nothing. Yeah. Right? It okay. gets. Uh, It'll tighten you up a little bit. Okay, which will be if, great. If you're driving, if you're watching, it's not too bad, I guess. But when you're driving, it's uh, it's quite an experience. And this is a good family event. Oh yeah. Correct. It's oh, a yeah. great time. Yep. Now, how to tell me about people can also take a boat. Yeah. If um, if you got a got a boat that you play with and you'd like to, uh, they can sit out there and watch. Yeah. Just come along with your anchor and your refreshments. And just anchor around the, the course. The only thing we ask is that you don't make any wake when we're running because those wakes can get us They're in trouble. Beat that boat up. Okay. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people been hurt uh, with that. But uh, we got the Coast Guard helping us out and the Natural Resources Police, and we got help. Oh, it sounds Just like a great Trying to keep things event. calm down somewhat. Now that's remind. Let's make sure I get this straight. June 27th, 28th, seven dollars a person, kids free, plenty of refreshments. You help them once they park. You help them get here if they need it. Yep. Right, and great viewing area. Mm -hmm. We got we got the bleachers. The county works with us with bleachers. We got bleachers okay. or. Just go, and what's really what's really nice about coming, although it's great out on the water, but for the person that's never been down here, you're right next to the pits. So you get to actually see them working. Well, on the we'll boats have a crane, everything. have okay. two cranes, have one here and one here, and you're you got boats back right up to the fence. I mean, you're right there. You so can you see, get it to see it all. Oh get yeah, to see you can it. see the guys taking propellers off, working on engines. It's uh, it's pretty cool. It's a three-ring circus. You've got the race going on. You've got the pit crew. You got food. You've never looked at it as a circus, but you're probably right. Now we're going to go with a different category of boat and a different driver. I'm pleasure to have with us Jimmy Stewart, not the actor, but the boat racer. Jimmy, thanks for having us here. Well, thank you. Now we're in the cockpit. Now explain to me what class of boat this is. This is called a Jersey Speed Skiff. Okay. Now right. what's different about this than Wheeler's boat, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? Well, this is a 16-foot flat bottom, lap strake style hull, which means it has uh, strakes on each side uh, and the bottom of the boat is completely flat. Wheeler's boat rides on a pocket of air and we literally just kind of skip down the water. Right and yep. Wheeler's in that cockpit by himself. Yep. You have a, you call him a co-pilot or what do you call him? Well, some people call him a rider, the co-pilot. It originally started out uh, when the class started back in the in the 40s and 50s as a what they called the riding mechanic. Okay. All right. So that person is to aid the driver in whatever yep. way. They were to aid. Nowadays, now that we're strapped in with the uh, with the safety of these cages and so forth, yeah, they're here primarily uh, as a separate set of eyes to help to be you able, in the race. Yep. We have we have hand signals that we talk back and forth with one another with uh, hand signals because we don't have any microphones and okay. keep an eye on other boats and gauges and. And Jimmy, what I found interesting, your co-rider is your? It's my sister. Now, what's her name and how old is she? Uh, uh, her name's Peg Wantio. She's okay. from uh, Berlin, Maryland, outside Ocean City. And uh, she's uh, she's uh, 51. She's uh, 13 months older than me. And she travels around with you in all the races? Uh, our whole entire family does. I think she's just keeping an eye on you. Mom, oh. say, keep an eye on that guy. <laughs> okay. Yep, it's a, whole, it's a whole family affair. My parents are into it. My sister, like I say, rides with me. We actually... Uh, this year we're campaigning two Jersey Speeds gifts. This one that I drive with my uh, co-owned with my uh, partner up in New Jersey and my sister rides with me. My daughter, 23-year-old uh, Courtney, actually drives my old Jersey Speeds gift. So you and, do have the whole family. Yep, and well. her sister, her younger sister, who's not only 19, Abigail, hopefully will be riding with her, her sister Courtney here at Ken Island this year. Family dinners after the race is pretty easy, right? Go to the nearest restaurant, you got it made. Oh, cozy, yeah. Probably. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of boat race talk, okay. that's for sure. Now, Jimmy, tell me about this boat. Now, um, there's two of us, we're buckled in. We're yeah. going to have a racing helmet. Oh, no. Yes, and yes. And a life jacket. We have, we have life jackets life jackets that we're that we have to wear that have flotation inside of them we have a uh, racing helmet uh, we have the same similar uh, restraint system uh, meaning seat belts it's a five-point harness two over the shoulder two across the lap and one between the legs we're actually 
are all bolted directly to this cage, and the cage is actually bolted to the stringers of the boat. Okay. So we're completely secure inside here. Now, you were telling me off camera when we do the races, you reach speeds up to 80 miles an hour. Yes. At the end of uh, long straightaways, like here at uh, Thunder on the Narrows, uh, here we'll we'll hit close to 81, maybe even 82 if the water conditions are good going into the now, turn. That's Jimmy. That's flying. On the that's, that's flying. That's now, moving. Now, what's interesting about this category, it sounds like... Uh, the wheeler told me it's a wild, wild west. I mean, you guys and gals are literally just, what, fighting for position? Or tell me how the race actually goes. Yep, we, uh, from the time the, the five, it's uh, five minutes before the start of the race. So when the five-minute gun goes off, we leave the pits, and we, uh, we try to get a bearing as to where different markers are on the race course to try to get an idea of where we want to be uh, to start the race. And uh, we literally... Uh, Basically, you want to hit that starting right, line right when it hits you, zero. You zero, want to zero. hit it right at zero to, to get the best start and the best lane that's best suited for your boat. Of course, the lane one or the inside lane closest to the buoys, generally the shortest way way around the course. And uh, and you're fighting for that spot. And I mean, you're, you're fighting, fighting for that spot. Yep, you're not given a lane. You actually go out there and we dice it up. We'll speed up, slow down. We'll try to psych them out, think we're going fast, and we'll they'll speed up and go past us. We'll <laughs> slow down and we'll go to the inside of them. Like a chess game at 80 it's, miles an it's hour. It's a total chess game. Total now, chess game. Uh, Jimmy, how about a little tour of the cockpit? What what all we got here? Well, I mean, your steering wheel. It's it's very. This is a very extremely basic boat. We have a steering wheel here, which actually comes up vertically, straight up oh, and down. Oh, will come. Okay. Yeah. This, so this is actually in the steering position here. All right. So we have a we have a rack that goes right back to uh, steer the rudder, which is uh, bolted to the transom of the boat. We have a uh, we have a little handle here between my legs that actually moves. You actually squeeze the handle, and you you can move it fore and aft. This is what most people think of as a trim tab okay. on a pleasure boat. It this just works mechanically. So it, you can actually adjust the attitude of the boat as it rides with the... Uh, with While the, you're going, okay. Similar to, to Wheeler's Hydroplane with the wing on the front, they adjust the the attitude of the boat with the air. We actually adjust it with uh, with turning, moving the trim tab on the back of the boat. Basic basic switches here for ignition. We have uh, we run an electric fuel pump, so we have a, a fuel pump switch. We run a water pump also because we do a lot of slow maneuvering. And uh, the uh, without having water circulate through the engine you potentially get uh, yeah, overheating yeah, conditions but it's uh it's very basic we have uh gauges to keep an it's eye on it's almost like an old crisscross speedboat I mean, am it, i far off or what? you're not far off no, at all no, no no very basic and what do you got under the hood here secrets oh okay <laughs> that's between you and the mechanic but obviously it's a big enough secret you can go 80 miles an hour yes it's a uh this is a uh what's called a stock class it's a uh what's underneath the hood of this is a uh stock Chevrolet 283 cubic inch uh, engine that's putting out about 300 and between 330 and 335 horsepower. Now let me ask you, during the race, this is I've never done this before. Is you, are you planning? I mean, is the bow that right now I'm looking out as we're parked in the parking lot? Mm -hmm. and we're looking over the bow. Does the bow go up or down when you were racing? Are you looking? When when we're racing, the the bow in this style hull because it's so flat, we actually don't go. We don't actually drive flat. The boat actually has an inherent wants to hop, okay. so it actually comes up in the bow, and the bow will rise, and the the boat will come back down, and the bow will flatten out, and then it will go back up, and so forth. When you're going in a straight line. Right. Now, now how about the corner? Now when you go in a corner, <laughs> anything can happen. Completely different animal. Yes. Okay. Uh, hydroplanes, like Wheeler showed, you have a uh, turn fin on the side right. to actually help grab the water to keep the boat flat and it actually kind of pivots on that as it goes around the course. These boats, they don't have a, they don't have a skeg or a turn fin in the middle of the boat, like uh, ski boats right, do. Right. Um, so the boat doesn't really want to turn. So You've got to fight this, and that's you, a physical feat to turn this Yep, thing, so to get the boat to turn, yeah. as you turn the wheel, the, the rudder is trying to lift the back of the boat, and when it does, the actual boat goes up on its side. Mm. So literally, when you go through the turn, these boats go up on their side, that's and then the they flatten thing. out, got, okay. and go up on our side and flatten out. So mm. it, it gets a little hairy in the That's turn. Hey, Jimmy, when you're going 80 miles an hour, again, I mean, you push, you know, you're getting G's that you're pushed back in the, uh, mm -hmm. right? so you're yes. almost sitting like this. Yes. Okay. Yes. And, at 80 yep. miles and the seatbelts are pulling you back, and uh, it's, you inherently, when the boat goes up, you want to, you almost <laughs> want to lean forward to try to, <laughs> please get that. Yeah, please. drop the nose of the boat down. But. Now, Jimmy, help us with the actual, how long is the race and how long does it take? Are they different or what? Uh, for all the different classes of boats that, you, that everyone will see here at the Thunder on the Narrows, uh, we all have the exact same starting procedure. Okay. It's uh, gun goes off gives you five minutes before the start of the race to figure out where you want to be and so forth, get a timing run and so forth. Some of us run 
Uh, we have actually electronic timer inside here uh, with a clock, so it we can, helps you hit that start. So line. we know exactly when the start of the race is, and we can actually do timing runs to figure out how how long it takes to get from this point to this point to start the race. Once the race starts and the, the clock counts down to zero, you cross the start finish line. Um, here we'll run, uh, since it's a fairly large course, we'll run four laps. So a little bit more four than a mile. Yeah, okay. one lap is about a mile and a quarter in, in total distance. So it's a five mile race. So it's approximately a five mile race, yeah. And what type of clock time? How long does it take you to do it? Five we'll do five miles in uh, a little under five minutes. We'll do it probably, uh, in the skip class we're doing it probably in about four minutes. 52 to 4 minutes and 58 seconds. So you're not, you're flying the whole time. Exactly. Yep. Now, uh, finishes like a lot of races, I mean, can it be a big group finish at the end? There can, there can be, yes, depending on the boats that'll come. Okay. Uh, we'll have, we'll run a full field of boats here. We're hoping to have anywhere from 17 to maybe even as many as 20 Jersey Speed Skits here. they'll be in the one heat? Uh, no, unfortunately, uh, uh, yeah, I can imagine 18 boats at 80 miles an hour. We're some of us would really like it. I think <laughs> it would be very, very entertaining sure for all the spectators. Like it, no, no, they wouldn't. We're we're allowed up to eight boats in one okay. one heat at one time. That's quite a few boats. Then, right? Yep, and and the we'll have if we we start out with say 20 boats uh, in the final for both Saturday and Sunday they'll have elimination heat so it'll only be the top say three boats in each one of the heat okay. that will make it to the final so generally the ones that make it to the final they're generally the top the top boats or the the quicker boats or the better handling boats so when we get down to the final at, at the end of each day racing for what would be the uh, divisional championship here on Saturday this year and the Paulson Memorial Award both at the same time you're gonna have the the, the top you're gonna, you're gonna have the boat. you're gonna you're have, have the top eight boats in the country are gonna be here and battling it out. Well, Jimmy, sounds like it's just another reason to come see the Thunder and the Narrows. Oh, year, absolutely. Right? It's going to be fun. It's well, good luck to you, okay, and your upcoming races, all right? Thank you. By the way, last question. Yeah. How many of these races do you do a year? I mean, is there a, is there obviously a season? It's Yes, it's a season. Uh, we started this year down in Lakeland, Florida, in the first weekend in March. Oh, uh, and I was up here freezing. Yeah, we were as well. Uh, <laughs> we left here in probably 20 degree weather, went down there and raced, and actually had to put antifreeze in our engines before we cold. came back because it was snowing here when we got home so we've got uh, we start we start in April uh, we were just down in Florida again this past weekend uh, and we'll run all the way through the uh, middle of October oh, it's, a long, it's six months in. it's yeah okay. yep it'll carry us anywhere from you get Canada to Florida at all? <laughs> it's it seems like when you're home you're you're always doing some type okay, of boat work right. yep well, Jimmy, thanks for being again for the tour, okay? And thanks for being a good boat. And I can't wait to see you go 80 miles an hour and fight for first place. I, I can't wait either. It's a great family thing. Our whole family's here. We'll actually be uh, bringing four boats between our two skiffs and uh, I'm gonna meet the two hydroplanes. You'll meet the whole entire family. Absolutely. So, look, thanks a million. I appreciate it. Most certainly. It. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Look forward to this weekend. Oh, great. Tell us a little bit about your boat here. Which we're standing next to. Okay, well, this is a, a five liter hydroplane. Five, oh, five. Um, what did you say? About 20 feet? Yes, 20 feet long, 20 feet about long. 10 and a half feet wide. We're on a 350 Chevrolet. Okay. Puts out somewhere in the neighborhood of 350 horsepower. Speed, we don't know. Uh, 115, 125. Normally, would we see 100 miles an hour in a race? Oh, you'll see, you'll see oh, 115. 115 plus. in a race? Yeah. Okay. Um, but we'll have boats here that are capable of 140 plus. Mm. I used to run in that class years ago. 140 miles an hour in the water. Oh yeah, yeah. Larry Lauderback and I, we tried to wipe each other out <laughs> right out here. <laughs> See that duck blind, he tried to put me into it there. one year. Larry, two years later, you... I tried to put him into Good. it. Good, paybacks, paybacks <laughs> are heck, right? Anyhow, I see you got the cameras here. You're probably wondering what this is all about. This, I should have had this off. It's all right. This is what they call the skid fin. So these boats don't turn to the right. So when you get to the turn, you cock your rudder, and this fin takes over. And this pulls you through, It'll keeps you, you through keeps, from, keeps from sliding, and this is critical. I mean, there's a lot of you don't have that. You're a in lot trouble. of science and tweaking that goes into making this work. But it's uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah, well, tell me, I I was enthralled by the whole cockpit concept. When I when we were young, we were talking about the old. Uh, boats, you'd sit in the back mm -hmm. with an open cockpit. Mm -hmm. Now you tell me you're in a nice, well, I don't want to say nice safe, but you're in a safer area. Uh, tell me about inside that cockpit. Well, the reason that you, 
when you come down, you'll see if you're in a hydroplane, you, they have to be reinforced now because in the late 90s, there was too many fatalities. So what we've got um, is a reinforced cockpit. The seat, when you go in, you're, you will sit, uh, you're strapped in. We have so an just air- Just like a race car, you mean you're, yeah. you're in there tight. Uh -huh. We have an air bottle. So if you do happen to have an accident, go upside down, you have access to air. And um, I'll show you the switch for the wing. And you told me there's a hatch. And the, yes. So if you, can, if you flipped yeah. over, people yeah. can get to you or right. you can get out. Yeah, um, underneath, underneath your seat is a hatch about like this. So if the boat's upside down, the driver's knocked out or- They can get into you. Safety people, and we don't race without safety people. Okay. Then they can take and open that hatch and help you get out. We were, how about we're looking inside the cockpit? Why don't you give us a guided tour here? Sure. I was telling you about the safety uh, innovations that have happened in the last decade or so. First off, you got your seat belts here, so you're strapped in. The man sitting in here, he's all strapped in, so if it flips, he stays with it. Okay. Over here is your air bottle. That's the oxygen if you if you do flip and you need air. Right? Yeah, as he's got uh, got a mask that attaches right to his helmet. Um, Hopefully it doesn't need it. has got about, oh, maybe 10 minutes of air. Okay. So you, 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 you got air until somebody can get to you. That's, that, idea. that's great. And I was telling you about the wings right, right here. See? It, it starts, so getting, all controlled starts there. getting light on you. You bring the wing up. Got it? Okay. We were on a steering wheel. Is it... Give me a feel for the tension of the play, like drive. And if I drive a car, I mean, just a little nudge. Is, I mean, is it? Tighter? Well, this is this is much 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 tighter. Much tighter. Oh yeah, yeah. You got to you got to work it because you don't want to loose. You don't want that loose. Right. We got as tight as we can so get. So it's it. as tight as it can get. Yeah, and it's very simple. We got our two gauges here: water gauge and the oil pressure gauge. That one gets below 60, you're in trouble. <laughs> that one gets up around 200, you're in trouble. trouble. So when that happens, we ask the driver to bring it in. Now, we have the pedals all the way up front. Hey, yes. Help us here. Well, on the left one, you just rest your foot on it. And okay. of course, and there's the tachometer there, too. Okay. And then there's your, uh, here's the throttle over here on the right. All right. It's very similar to an airplane. Yeah, sure. Now, hey, look at size-wise. Look, at I'm a little guy. I can squeeze. I mean, is there a size limit on this or not? On the cockpit? Yeah. No. no, no, okay. No, so the big is... guys can get in there too. Yeah. Okay. And there's my hatch there. I just noticed it right oh, there. There's yeah. my handle to my hat. That's exactly right. So if I need to get out, it looks like it should be more for somebody getting in. That's right? Precisely. That's okay. It swings out. If you get in trouble, they'll come up you on the hatch and take you out uh, feet first. And that's a tight squeeze, isn't it? Yep. Yes, it is. <laughs> and, hey, question. The driver helmet? Uh, no life jacket or life jacket? Well, it's optional. optional. Uh, our driver wears one. I never wore one in, in these. I just wore a helmet. Um, it, it's whatever you want. Okay. And then when it shuts, is there a crank? To sh how do you, when it shuts? Just, uh. Oh, just push down. Okay. Oh, it's a button. Okay. It just Very easy. blocks in. That's it. That's tight quarters in there, Will. <laughs> Lord. Okay. So over 100 miles an hour, you're strapped in. Yeah. You're brave men and women to do this. You know that. I don't know about brave. Maybe simple. <laughs> I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's pretty cool. All right, Wheeler, how about we do this? We're going to remind them one more time. June 27th, 28th. $7. Thunder on the Narrows. And like you tell me, you're going to have wounded veterans there. You want mom and dad's there. And we're going to do a good job getting your gate yeah. receipts up this year. Because yeah. it's going to help the Boy Scouts. Yeah, we, yeah we, we have a nice show here, especially for the people who have never seen it. Come down here for one day anyhow and check us out. Okay, it you'll, sounds great. You'll have a good time. Thank you for watching QAC TV. We hope to see you at the Thunder of the Narrows, June 27th and 28th, a great event for the entire family. See you then.